I worked for Professor Edward N. Lorenz. He had an LGP-30 in his office, and he taught me everything he knew about the LGP-30. Well, he'd hand me something saying, here's the instructions, that's what people used to do, right? So I saw they were advertising for programmers, and this was a new thing. I was hired to work on the um, ANFSQ-7. The XD-1 was the first ANFSQ-7, and it was at Lincoln Labs. I found out about the Apollo program, so I thought, I guess I should delay graduate school again, because I'd like to work on this program that puts all these men <laughs> on the moon. But there was this one a thing that they were worried about, what if the mission aborts? And everybody said, it's never going to. It just won't happen. Oh, well, good. We'll give this one to Margaret, because she's a beginner and is never going to go there anyway. And sure enough, it aborted. So it went to this program I had written, which I named Forget It. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I became an overnight expert. So I, was, uh, I concentrated on the system software and then gradually took on, in addition to the system software, the command module software, and around the Apollo 8 time, taking over all of the onboard flight software. The one thing that stood out in my mind, being in the onboard flight software, was that it was man-rated, meaning if it didn't work, a person's life was at stake, if not over. That was always uppermost in my mind, and probably many others as well. Uh, it had to be man-rated, and it had to work the first time. You had to simulate the hardware, you had to simulate you know, the vehicle and the world outside of it. So you had the hope that you simulated everything so it was as much like the real thing as you could get it to be.